Hello, I'm Katie Jarvis. This episode is sponsored by ATA. Visit atacpa.net to learn more about the services they offer for individuals and organizations. ATA, your long-term accounting partner. Welcome, Marty. Thank you, Scott. How are you? I am doing well. It's so good to see you. Um, You and I have worked together for uh, a long, long time. So I'm really looking forward to uh, having you here on Real Foot Forward. Um, Let's talk um, a little bit about where um, Little Marty came from. Tell us about where you were born and, and your childhood and things like that. You know, Scott, everybody always comments about my accent, and I tell them I can't help it. I was born in Alabama, raised in Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee. I'm going to sound like this. Can't help it. But, yeah, um, moved to uh, Tennessee from Atlanta, Georgia, and um, have been here since 1968. So it is home. My family moved to Memphis two weeks before Dr. King was assassinated. So interesting time growing up in in Memphis and in West Tennessee. Uh, my, uh, my roots are Southern as far deep as they can go. So. What, what did your uh, parents do for a living? My dad was um, it, it, interesting. My dad was a minister of music, and that's what he said was his primary job. And part time, he had the job that supported our family. And my dad was in uh, the forklift and heavy equipment industry. So he, uh, uh, when we first moved here, he was transferred. Uh, by stop and go. Remember the old stop and go markets? Sure. They were like 7 Eleven. Sure. Uh, Dad was uh, a, a regional director with stop and go, and they were looking to expand their uh, market into West Tennessee, and that's how we got here. Uh, but Daddy's love and um, passion was his. Uh, work in the church and being a minister of music. So um, when you he, transferred, uh, did, did he get transferred into Memphis? Yes. Yes. And what church, what and church go, was he the minister of music at? We went to, we started at, um, I was raised up Pentecostal. So we started at Park Avenue Church of God. And, um, that church merged with another church, which eventually became Oak Forest Church of God, which was on Holmes Road. Um, and then Daddy uh, went to Christian Heritage and was the minister of music there for probably 17 years until he passed away. Yeah, wow. Mom worked. Yeah, this was this was really interesting. Mom really didn't work when we were in Atlanta. Um, But when she moved out here, she found herself, you know, us kids getting a little bit older. She wanted to work. And so she went to work for the old Holiday Press, which was part of Holiday Inns over on Lamar Avenue as a key punch operator. And I can remember as a little girl um, not being able to go to school. I had a cold or sick something and um you know mom hello she wasn't moving missing work just because i wasn't in school so she took me to work with her and not many people will remember the old key punch cards and like the key punch operators would key the information in and the cards that they messed up on made a mistake on you know they would fall so i spent the day making my own paper dolls and houses with the cards, the key punch cards. And so this man comes in, I'm 10 years old in the floor playing. And this man comes in and he goes, well, who is this we have here today? And mother, the look on her face was like, Oh no, you know, I've messed up big time. And she said, well, this is my daughter. She's not feeling well. And the man sits on the floor and starts playing with me. 
at the time, 10 years old, I really didn't know that much about it. I met him a few other times after that, but it was Kimmons Wilson. And he sat on the floor and played with me for 30 minutes or so. And, you know, hey, that's a memory you never forget. Yeah, that whole family is really special. Um, the whole uh, Wilson clan, you know, are fantastic. And um, my memory of the old Holiday Inn is, you know, it had that big round section in front. Yeah. Which is where all the advertising and marketing people sat. Mm -hmm. And I used to, as one of my college jobs, I delivered uh, paper products to Holiday Inn. Uh, from Origami was the name of the company. And a few times I would go and look in to see what the really cool hip people were doing um, inside that round section. Isn't that crazy? I mean, Holiday Inns, that corporation, that office right there was so much a part of so many of our memories growing up. I used to love to go down there and see the flags. I just thought that was the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. all the flags that lined the driveway. Yeah, it was, so, it was a big part of uh, mom and dad. Um, what, um, so you were growing up, where did you go to high school? I went to um, a, a couple of different high schools, but I wound up my junior and senior years at Briarcrest. And I was the, I hate to tell my age, but I was the second or third, I believe the second, graduating class from Briarcrest High School. Wow, that's I know. Great. More more Memphis history there. More Memphis history. It was um, amazing. You know, there weren't a lot of private schools at that time. When my family moved to Memphis, um, we first of all lived in Parkway Village, right off of uh, Perkins. And then my dad, was so excited because we were going to build our own home in this new area. A golf course had opened up and there weren't hardly any houses and it was called Fox Meadows. And he was so excited. And so um, I grew up in the Fox Meadows um, area um, went to Briarcrest, graduated from Briarcrest, um, and then left and went to Lee College in Cleveland, Tennessee for a couple of years. Came back home, um, met my sweet husband. We were both working at a fairly new hospital, St. Francis, way out on the outskirts of Park Avenue. And, um, I went to work and then went to, um, it was Memphis State back then, and that's where I graduated from. Where in Parkway Village did you grow up? What street? It was Judy Lynn. It was right almost to the interstate, uh, the overpass. Um, I'm trying to think of what's, you know where the, the Memphis uh, Marriott and I think it's not the Marriott now. It's, I can't remember now what hotel it is. Yeah, I know. Where but it's just talking. a couple of streets. Yeah, a couple of streets back from there. I grew up on Daniel used... Cove. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was very Crazy. close. Yeah, very close. And then when I, first started going, when I first started going to college um, and I moved into my first apartment, it was in Fox Meadows. Uh, see, yep, our paths should have crossed a lot sooner. Maybe we did see each other and just didn't know. Our if first date, mine and Greg's first date. Do you remember the shopping center right there at um, Mendenhall and um, I think that's Winchester right there? There used to be a Shoney's in that shopping center. Yeah. That was where Greg, Greg was a big spender. We went to Shoney's. <laughs> that was great. That's great. No, I love that whole area. It brings back every once in a while, I'll drive through there just to look and see what things look like now. So what, what, we do um, too. 
what made you uh, decide to go to Lee College? And what uh, I know that you know the the story, your life story, ends up that now you're in the tour and travel business. But back then, what did you think you wanted to do, and and what led into that uh, decision? You know what, crazy. Uh, you know, back then, quite a few years ago. Um, nobody really knew what marketing or public relations, or at least my mom and dad didn't. And mom and dad, um, I knew I wanted to go to Lee College. Lee College was our church denomination college, and I had looked forward to that my whole life. And so um, mom and dad said, well, you know what, you can really, you need to be either a school teacher or an accountant. I stink at accounting, so that was pretty much out right off the bat. And so um, I went in for early childhood education. And um, the Lord was very gracious to me, and he allowed me to do a student teaching um, gig. My, I think it was my second year, first semester, whatever, a small underdeveloped, underdeveloped rural community needed a teacher quick. And so I went and I student taught half a day and it became real clear mm -hmm. that I was not going to be a good teacher. <laughs> and so just through um, a lot of circumstances and all, I decided that um, I just really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I came back home and I went to work at St. Francis Hospital. And I went to work in the pharmacy as a pharmacy tech. Um, I applied for a job as an administrative assistant in the PR and marketing area. I'd gotten to know the ladies there. We all hit it off. And, um, after being there about six months, my boss asked me one day, she said, can you write something for me? And I'm like, sure. And so I wrote out an, a news release and she came back and she said, did you know you could write? I'm like, well, yeah, I've been writing since the first grade. And she said, no, you have a flair for writing. And, um, it was with her, um, I can remember Nora just guiding me and being the sweetest, having a good spirit and helping me to see this creative side. And um, I went, that's when I started back to the University of Memphis and started in uh, PR, communications, had a wonderful, wonderful um, Counselor, director, Dr. Rick Fisher. He was amazing. And he got me into the Public Relations Society of America, the student chapter. And it just grew from there. It was um, uh, a long time coming. I was working in healthcare. I had a lot of years in healthcare, um, but I always did marketing and public relations. And uh, it, it, it was a, a blessing for me to be able to have had a boss that took that much time and attention to see that, you know, maybe being an administrative assistant, I wasn't that great at it, mm -hmm. but I did do better at this. And so I am forever grateful. So you, uh, your path took you out of healthcare at some point. I know you end up working in retail, uh, in the marketing and PR. Yes. How, how did that happen? Well, I, you know what? I had, like I say, great healthcare experience. I was with St. Francis. I worked with Methodist and um, St. Joe. And then I went to the medical society and I was there. And managed care was coming in. <clears throat> I wasn't crazy about managed, <clears throat> excuse me, managed care and what it was doing to healthcare. And 
there was an ad. Okay, again, I'm telling my age. There was an ad in the newspaper, and I saw it, and it, um, marketing director, and it was a little vague, and um, I sent my resume in, and it was for a new um, mall that was being built in Memphis, and it was Wolf Chase Galleria. And I started uh, working for Urban Retail Properties, the uh, company that developed Wolf Chase. And again, um, just forever blessed, the Lord opened the door for me. They were a, a developer out of Chicago and they, they hired me. And I had, uh, I loved the retail field. I, I, my dad, when he owned or worked for Stop and Go, they always laughed because I would go in and rearrange the shelves because I thought that people would look at stuff differently. And I'm, I'm a kid. I don't know. But I've always loved that retail. And so I uh, started working there was with uh, Urban for 11 years. And while we were there, they were very innovative and they started a retail tourism program. And there were 11 properties. It was their high-end properties across the country. And it was, um, you know, you shop with us, come here, you get a coupon book, things that are so commonplace now but we're talking 25 years ago, you know, it was cutting edge. And so um, that's how I kind of got into tourism a little bit and doing the things that, how do we draw visitors into our properties and things like that. So um, did that for a little over 10 years. And that was, um, and, I remember uh, um, we used to call that the new mall. And so I still to this Absolutely. day can't help but call it the new mall. Um, people, people are like, "What new mall? What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Well, it's the new mall." It, you know. So yeah, that no, was a, it was a big it was a big deal back then. It it really was. It really was. I can remember um, when we first opened that um, people would drive from Nashville. Uh, to get their picture made at Wolf Chase with our Santa and with our Easter set. <laughs> and I, I loved it. I thought it was great. So yeah, it, it is, you know, that's crazy. It is still the new mall, but it's like 25 years ago. Isn't that crazy? It is in retail because changed now, so dramatically since then. It's a whole um, different world. It really, it really has. Online shopping has changed things uh, tremendously. But there are those that are finding they still do um, like and, and desire that experience. And that's, you know, that's what tourism is. People want an experience. They can see things online or they can um, have a virtual um, experience, but it's not the same. You know, you want to go. We're, we're a, a people that, that want to actually feel, see, touch, hear. Um, and, and I'm one of those crazies. I like to, to see the sweater before I order it online. I want to touch it and, and I'm one of those crazies. I still like going to the grocery store. Everybody's into, you know, buying their stuff uh, and having it delivered. I'm like, mm, no, I got to go see it myself. So, so how, how did you, what was your path? How did you end up working for the state of Tennessee? Well, as you stated, um, Retail has, has gone through some, some changes. And the group that I worked for, very young, very uh, hip group of guys. And they looked 
and they realized that they were very asset heavy and cash poor, which, you know, their cash poor and my cash poor are two different things. But they decided that they wanted to go in a different direction. So they sold all of their holdings um, to the three, four larger uh, retail development companies. And um, the company that I got kept me on, helped, I helped to go through the due diligence. And, um, you know, I just wasn't, I just wasn't having fun anymore. I guess that's the best way to put it. And I had attended Governor's Conference. It was here in Memphis at the Peabody. And I heard um, at that time Commissioner Susan Whitaker say, you know, we've lost our West Tennessee uh, director. And I went, hmm, that's interesting. And so um, afterwards, I went up to her and I said, you know what I'd like to see about that job? And she said, well, you need to talk to, and at the time it was Assistant Commissioner Phyllis Qualls Brooks. And I went over to her and she was telling me a little bit about the job. And I said, you know what, that's my job. And she said, really? And I said, yes, ma'am, that's my job. You don't need to look any further. And so she told me to write my name and number down. I did. And she called me. And I went to Nashville, um, took my resume, interviewed, and um, to be honest, Commissioner Whitaker was a little nervous. She said, you know what, I don't think the rural people will embrace Marty. I think she's too big city Memphis. And so I just asked, can I interview again? Can I talk to her again? And I went in and I talked to her again and um, she didn't hire me. She hired another lady um, and that lady lasted six weeks and they called me and asked me to come back up. And I said, you know, we can keep doing this or you can just go ahead and hire me because this is my job. <laughs> and that was, that was 15 years ago. And um, I've loved every minute of it. So for, for those out there that are listening that don't know what you do, um, tell us a little bit about what, what is your job and what do you do day to day? Oh my gosh, Scott. This is why I love my job. There is no day to day. It is different every day. It can be, as you well know, me coming in and working for a week, helping Graceland with media during Elvis week when they get thousands of media inquiries, or it can be um, me going to one of our rural counties and sitting down with the chamber office to show them how they can drive visitation to their community, to their county, to help them understand what tourism they do have. Um, and no two days are alike. Some days I'm at an agritourism farm, and let me just tell you, I'm not an outdoorsy kind of girl, but I have become real familiar with barnyard animals and planting crops and doing the agritourism things. I'm just as comfortable with that as I am going and sitting around a table with mayors to determine, you know, what is the best path? A lot of our communities have not understood the benefit, uh, the, the, the revenue that can be generated by tourism. Um, they haven't understood that they have tourism. Some of my highlights in this job, um, one was 
sitting around with Robert Kirkland and sitting in the trailer and him telling me his vision and saying, can you see it? And I was, you know, I'm like, no, I can't see it. And by the time he was through with you, you saw it. But to see that vision, to see um, the places that have sprung up in these last 15 years. I mean, it, it truly has been amazing and no two days have been the same. If it's marketing, public relations, strategic planning, um, what I tell my counties, and I now have 26 counties, what I tell them, whatever you need, call me. Because if I can't do it, I'll at least find whoever it is that can. So that's what I love about my job. So I know that uh, we both have a passion for Tennessee as a state, but also West Tennessee, you know, is a special place for both of us. If you're talking yeah. to somebody who's coming to uh, West Tennessee to say visit Graceland um, from London, um, what are what are some of the things that you think they should include on a trip to West Tennessee that maybe they could visit, you know, in a day trip from Memphis and back? Oh my gosh, you know, Scott, right there. I could keep them busy in West Tennessee, which you know I call it Best Tennessee, and I get in trouble for that, but I'll just get in trouble. Um, but you know what? Head up Highway 51. Stop in Covington. Their square is so good. The shops, the shopping, the little restaurants, such a fun day. Head on up 51. You can stop in uh, Henning, Alex Haley's birthplace and home and visit. Keep heading up 51. You've got uh, Charlene's uh, colony of shops and tea room. You've got, um, you know, I can't even begin to tell you everything, but you have got uh, in New Bern, you know what? Very few people know this, but Amtrak has a depot in New Bern and they stop there. And the depot is, um, it's historical. It's got a lot of uh, a small museum attached with it. And the little town is so charming. And then you head on up, you've got Dyersburg, you keep going, you're at real foot. You know, in uh, Trimble, you've got full throttle uh, saloon shine. Um, and that's just, if you're going up 51 North, if you go 40, you can stop, uh, you've got the Hatchie River, you've got the Hatchie River Museum at the Delta, um, West Delta, Heritage Center, you've got um, Sonia Outlaw Clark has done an amazing job with uh, Sleepy Joe Estes home, and of course, Tina Turner, who is from that area. Again, the food, the minefield, you know, you eat there at the restaurant, plus you see the minefield, which is mind boggling if you go there and if you go to Brownsville you can go by the burger basket I think that's right which was voted the number one burger in Tennessee yeah. for a couple of years in a row um, you know what and then if you go out 57 or if you go towards Pickwick you know McNary County Rockabilly Highway Jackson um, and I always this is bad, but hey, I'm going to know where the good places are to go eat. So you've got Old Country Store um, in Jackson, Hagee's Catfish Hotel, um, 
as you're going into Savannah towards Pickwick Lake, top of the river. It, there is so much Shiloh. You can't miss Shiloh that tells that story of um, the Civil War and the battle fought there. Um, you know, Paris, Henry County, how many states have their own Paris and have their own Eiffel Tower? <laughs> you know, we have the most unique, fun experiences. Um, somebody said, oh, well, y'all just have hunting and fishing. We have hunting and fishing along with. We, um, the Dixie Theater in Huntington. I mean, to me, that is so incredible. If you've never been to a show at the Dixie, and again, they've got a great square, um, great places to eat, fun things to do. Alamo, you know what? How often do you get to uh, sit in your car, drive through, and feed exotic animals? I don't know, but let me just tell you, they got some pretty aggressive ostriches there, so just be careful. <laughs> but, you know, how, how do I say this one thing? Because there are so many things that a visitor coming to Memphis and wanting to expand on that visit, there is more to do in West Tennessee. The music, the food, the history, the outdoor recreation, we've got it all. Now we're, we're, Definitely going through an unprecedented time in the tour and travel business that uh, we didn't anticipate and everybody um, had all of their plans and, you know, was ready to go for 2020. Um, how do you see the uh, coronavirus and uh, the rest of the year? Obviously, you don't have a crystal ball, neither do I. Um, but how do you see tour and travel progressing through the rest of the year? You know, Scott, I'm, I'm optimistic. I, I'm an optimist at heart, and I'm optimistic. First of all, I think that, um, you know, we're all going to get through this just fine. Our visitation may look a little different um, going forward. Um, I think that this is a great opportunity for our smaller rural, regional um, attractions, restaurants, um, outdoors. I mean, we've got wide open outdoors. So as our parks start to reopen and as things start to slowly um, reopen, I think that we have great opportunity to welcome those visitors back. Um, are we going to see a lot more Purell bottles sitting around? Absolutely. Um, are we going to encounter maybe desk clerks now wearing a face mask for a while? Sure. And is that okay? You bet. You bet. The thing I hate about face masks and what I hate uh, everybody having to wear them I can't see people smiling anymore and that makes me sad. So I look at eyes and a lot of people smile really well with their eyes, but I think that it's just that we're going to be fine. We are going to be fine. Um, I read a, a recent um, survey that talked about where people want to go when they get out to travel. Uh, in these upcoming months, and Tennessee was listed in the top five. Tennessee is a wonderful state to visit. We were the only non-beach state that was listed, and folks will be looking 
for the more rural experiences, uh, we've got the best. And I think that we need to let people know we're open for business. We want you to come. We're going to be safe. We're going to be smart. But we want you here. And we'll embrace you with our hearts, not our arms right now. But um, I think that there's just opportunity. I think there's opportunity. I tell you, I have been amazed, amazed. And you guys are at the top of the charts with this. But the virtual experiences and the online teaching that's been going on, I think that those things, when people see what we've done during this time, it's going to make them put us at the top of their list to come and visit, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, in person, and they won't be able to wait. You uh, mentioned Susan Whitaker, and I had the privilege of working with her and her team years and years mm -hmm. ago, and I had great respect for everything they were accomplishing. Uh, we have a new tourism commissioner um, here in Tennessee now, Mark Azell, um, who I know you work very closely with, and, and he's working um, with the governor. Uh, why don't you mention a little bit about Mark and the great work he and the, and the new team, which includes you, um, is working on? Well, we, um, we were so fortunate to get Commissioner Ezell. Um, he is a ball of energy. His family owned um, and operated Purity Dairy for many years, and he still refers to himself as a milkman, which we all get a big kick out of. Um, he is probably one of the most energetic people I have ever come across and uh, his mind is going 90 to nothing all the time thinking of new and creative ideas um, for the state and when you have that much energy it, it, you can't help but let it rub off on you and he is going all the time um, right now he is working with um, the economic recovery group as we reopen our businesses um, in Tennessee. And uh, I, I just have to say, I can't think of anyone better suited to take on that responsibility and that task. He loves Tennessee. He loves our state. Um, he and I get along great. We, we mess with each other all the time, aggravating, but anybody that brings chocolate to staff meetings, I'm, I'm voting for them. And he has an endless supply of chocolate. So we get along great, but he, I think some of the things that he is doing for tourism in our state and nudging us maybe in areas where we're a little uncomfortable at first, but then once you get in, it's like, you know, when you go swimming, you know, you stick your toes in a little bit to make sure the water's not freezing cold, but then somebody pushes you in and you're like, you know what, I can do this. And that's what I like about him. He jumps in. He is uh, driving tourism. We all know tourism generate is the second uh, largest generator of revenue in the state, second only to agriculture. And he really wants us to be number one. He wants tourism to be number one. And um, I can't wait to see what he does for the next two years.
Me either. I'm very excited and I'm very grateful to you for all the work that I know you were close to Mr. Kirkland and I know that you have championed Discovery Park out there um, as a great destination um, and we appreciate that very, very much so. Um, and we all look forward to getting back into the business of uh, serving these tour and travel customers. Absolutely. You know what? I always say that by welcoming in the visitors that we welcome in to Tennessee, that we're really, um, you know, it's kind of like you make a big fuss about company when they come and the rest of the family may be like, we well, don't make a fuss about us. I feel like when we make a fuss about these visitors, we're really serving the citizens of the state of Tennessee because for every visitor that comes in and spends money in our state, we're helping to hold down taxes. We're able to provide the services um, that, that would sometimes raise taxes. You know, we can, the monies can go to help roads, it can go to build schools or whatever we can use that money to do. And so I really feel like uh, this job is a service job. I love it. I love serving and working for uh, the people of Tennessee. And thank you, Scott. I love Discovery Park. You are very welcome, and I hope to see you again here in person as soon as possible. This is Scott Williams, president of Discovery Park of America. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Start planning your visit to Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. And also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.